Endeavor ISS, this is JSC PAO. How do you hear me? Rob, we have you loud and clear. Uh, good to see you, Ron, and the rest of the crew, and we have questions here in Houston. Hi, this is Robert Perlman with CollectSpace.com with a question for Mark Kelly. This is, of course, the final flight of Space Shuttle Endeavor, but it's coming just before the 40th anniversary of another spacecraft named Endeavor flying to the moon on Apollo 15, and while a rover, Opportunity is making its way to a crater named Endeavor on Mars. With that in mind, how would you place your mission and the missions of Space Shuttle Endeavor into the larger context of humanity's space exploration endeavors? Well, there's also a uh, ship going around Australia right now uh, commemorating the ship Endeavor that did the, one of the first voyages to circumnavigate Australia. So, you know, it's pretty significant. The space shuttle's been the workhorse of the U.S. space program for uh, over 30 years now, and it's been an incredible success. We've never built anything that can do what the space shuttle can do, carry that tremendous mass to orbit, bring stuff back, do spacewalks, robotic operations. I mean, it's what built, literally built the space station. So to retire the space shuttle is pretty significant. And the last flight, you know, it's, it's bittersweet, but I think it's time, you know, that we move on and do something, you know, equally exciting build a new vehicle, and maybe go to new destinations. Thanks. And uh, for Mike Fink, um, you'll soon hold the record for the most time in, uh, in space by a U.S. astronaut. And, but by the all-time list, you'll still rank, I believe, 20, 20th behind 19 Russian cosmonauts. As our longest traveled space explorer and an experienced space station crew member, do you feel there's a value to extending the length of individual crew members' ISS expeditions for going uh, in preparation for going further out into the solar system? That's a great question. Uh, it's uh, certainly an honor to get a chance to fly uh, up in space and, uh, you know, especially for long periods of time. And I think uh, any records that are happening now, even the greatest, uh, you know, on the Russian side of 804 days, that's all going to be uh, uh, long forgotten when humans uh, really uh, start to explore the solar system, especially with some of the new vehicles that uh, NASA's going to come up with. So uh, it's, it's uh, I think, in preparation for that, you know, six months at a time it seems to be what uh, seems to be working now for the space station. Uh, anything longer than that's going to be a little bit tougher, but I think uh, we can live up here relatively indefinitely. You know, a year mission's not out of the question aboard the space station. It'd be a lot more interesting to spend a year going to Mars, however. This is Gerhard Daum with the German Space Agency and Space Expo Association. Question for Box. You are the prime operator of the SMRMS. What was your most challenging robotics task, and what was it like working at the robotics station in the cupola with that view to Earth? Well, Gerhard, uh, I'll tell you what. Um, the cupola was everything that I uh, had heard from other people times 10. It's in a magnificent view. Uh, you have a view of literally half of the space station uh, operating from the cupola. Um, some of the robotic ops that we did on uh, EVA2 uh, didn't even need any cameras. You could just look out the window. Um, a lot of the uh, robotics op robotic ops that we're doing on this mission are located on the other side of the station. Um, for example, when we installed AMS and ELC-3, so the advantage of the cupola uh, wasn't apparent as far as looking out the window, but just as a place to be, as a place to operate the robotic arm, it was a wonderful, and it is a wonderful, wonderful place to be. Thank you. Question for the spacewalkers, Drew and Mike. For Drew, you performed three EVAs, kind of a surgery, on the final Hubble servicing mission, and three on this ISS mission. What are the major differences executing the EVAs on Hubble and the station, and what were the most difficult and most exciting moments? Well, Gerhard, thanks. That's a, that's a good question and a tough one to answer. I can tell you that uh, each of the EVAs were challenging, and, uh, and I can tell you that now after three days of being outside, I'm pretty worn out, and my hands, uh, my hands are very tired as well, and, and I don't uh, know that I'd be ready to go out uh, tomorrow like uh, Mike and, and Greg are going to. Uh, but uh, 
the differences, of course, are that Hubble are very cl Hubble is very close to the, to our airlock, and we don't have to travel far into the payload bay to reach it and, and perform the tasks. And of course, with space station, we traverse uh, over long distances, and uh, especially in the dark, it's very easy to get uh, a little bit disoriented and sometimes lost. And and I know I went the wrong way a few times, uh, it, at least briefly, trying to un uh, understand really where I was headed. So, um, but the work is the work is challenging. Uh, fortunately, the space station was built uh, to be serviced by astronauts. The Hubble uh, was not built uh, really that way. Uh, although we have performed, you know, many servicing missions to it. So um, the tasks are just as challenging. I work just as hard. In fact, I think harder uh, with all the activities we had. And we're just happy to be done with three uh, successful spacewalks and looking forward to a fourth. And for Mike, you performed six EVAs in the Russian Olan space suit during Expedition 9 and 18. On this mission, you ex executed two of your three planned EVAs in the U.S. EMU spacesuit. What are the advantage and disadvantage of each type of spacesuit, and are the tasks easier to execute in either the Russian or the U.S. suit? That's a great question. I've had the privilege of being in the Russian suit, and I like it very much. The Orlan uh, is pressurized to, to about six pounds per square inch, or 0.4 atmospheres. Uh, it's a very serviceable suit, and uh, we don't have to spend a long time getting ready. Uh, the pre-breathe time is relatively short. And uh, the American suit is uh, more mobile uh, because it runs at a lower pressure, but that means we have a long uh, pre-breathe time, and it takes a longer time to get ready. However, both suits are great for what they do. It's uh, great to go out in space and do on, go on a spacewalk, but I think every spacewalk that I've been on is really tough. Spacewalks are not easy at all. Hi, uh, Denise Chow at Space.com. A question for Mark Kelly. Um, the past two days, NASA has made some big announcements in terms of a development plan for a vehicle for deep space exploration and a sample return mission to an asteroid. And I was curious as to what your reaction was to the announcements. Well, we didn't see, I mean, we, we don't get a, have a lot of time to look at a lot of news here. We did get the announcement on the multi-purpose crewed vehicle that Lockheed Martin, you know, originally it was Orion and now it's, uh, that design is going to be used uh, to, you know, hopefully one day come back to the space station and do some other things. So we're, we're pretty excited about it. I, within the space, um, within the astronaut office, I worked uh, Orion stuff before I was assigned to STS-134. I think it's a good vehicle, it's a good design, and, you know, hopefully folks from our office will be flying it one day. And a question for Ron Guerin. Um, what has it been like living on the space station with the, the construction pretty well complete, and also before Dimitri, Katie, and Paolo left, uh, what was it like being on the station with the pretty full house? Well, uh, you know, I was here three years ago, and it was a big place then, and it's a it's an even bigger place now. Um, you know, it, it's a it's a wonderful place to live and work. It's a it's a wonderful wonderful perspective we have on the planet up here, and uh, you know, the science that we're doing on board, uh, I think, is really going to make a, a big difference on the Earth. I think, you know, when I was here last time, we were just getting the science going, and it's really starting to ramp up now. And you know, we've got world class laboratories throughout the the, uh, the complex here that are really going to, I think, uh, make some breakthroughs. And it really, you know, it's it's this is a tremendous investment in the future of our planet and the future of humanity, and I, and it's really neat to be a part of that and to see it, to see all these years of construction finally, you know, the the result of that uh, coming to fruition is really nice. Uh, Mark Caro for uh, Aviation Week. <clears throat> I have a question for the shuttle crew. I, I'm wondering how much professional responsibility, even pressure, you feel to do all you can to place the space station in, on, in the best possible footing before the shuttle retires. Hey, that's a very good question, and you know it very much is a, a, a big part of our mission. I mean, this is the last uh, flight, really, uh, before the station is considered assembly complete. Uh, much of what we have up here, we're bringing some logistics, but we've installed some external spare equipment, um, you know, during this mission, and uh, you know, and you know, the whole point of that is to make sure that the there's longevity for the station without the shuttle for many years to come, hopefully to 2020 and and well beyond. Uh, without the shuttle, as uh, and Mark mentioned earlier, 
Uh, it's very hard to bring uh, bring things up that go externally and bring things down. And uh, you know, there will be the possibility to do spacewalks, of course, from the airlock in the station. But um, the servicing of the space station uh, is going to be more difficult. And although we do have you know other vehicles from other countries, uh, ATV and HTV and, and Progress uh, for supply. Um, bringing things down that are that are, are not working to figure out what you know what uh, how to repair them or how to improve them will be a little more difficult. But uh, this is a you know this is very important and and uh, it's really the point of, uh, of of everything we're doing now is trying to make sure the space station is well positioned to handle a, a full crew of six and enable it to do the science that it's designed to do that'll that'll carry us forward. Uh, hi, it's Bill Harwood with CBS News and Greg. You can keep the mic. I'll ask you this question. Um, you know, we were talking the other day about how it's been 27 years since uh, the space station program was approved, and I remember talking to Bill Shepard in the early 90s about the wall of EVA and all the concern about doing this, and you guys are getting ready to do the last shuttle EVA in all that time as assembly comes down. Can somebody, I don't know, reflect on the, the how far NASA has come in developing this EVA capability that, that you've used to build the station? Well, uh, that's a that's a good point that you've made, and uh, you know, certainly uh, being able to perform spacewalks is critical to the life of the space station, and, and we've seen that on every shuttle mission and uh, many of the space station expeditions that have been here, the requirement to perform EVAs. If we didn't have that capability, uh, the station certainly would not be able to last as long as we, we plan for it to last. And also, um, I think that it, uh, the capability to do spacewalks has something to do with certification longer than what original plans are. Um, so. To be able to maintain that, that's just a, a part of life uh, to work and live in space. We will always have to have the ability to go out and put our hands onto objects, and we've certainly seen that, and we, I can reflect back on the Hubble Space Telescope. It would never have lasted as long as it has, nor would it have last, will it last into the future without the assistance of uh, humans uh, in the loop uh, with tools in their hands uh, going out to perform the work, uh, because uh, number one, many of those tasks are critical and have to be be performed in very short order, and we just don't have the capability right now with robotics or other devices, um, you know, any other capability to get out there and, and get the work done. So the spacewalking is critical. The ability to uh, get outside and, and do the work is important. And uh, on the last uh, EVA for EVA 3, of course, we tested out a new uh, protocol, pre-breathe protocol, which allows us to have sort of a normal morning, uh, spend less time on oxygen masks, and be able to uh, get outside without the additional pre-planning that we've had in the past that required uh, camping out in the airlock overnight at a reduced pressure. So the capabilities are, are uh, important for the longevity of space station and, uh, and folks uh, back at the centers in, uh, on Earth have been working to uh, advance those capabilities and make it expedite our capability to get outside and do the work that we need to do when it's required. Uh, let me ask Mike Fink uh, a related question, if I could. On Friday, uh, you guys are going to go over 1,000 hours in EVA time during assembly of uh, ISS, or more than 40 days, which is either an, incredibly, an incredible milestone or, or maybe it's just a trivial milestone. I don't know. How do you look at that 1,000 hours of EVA time? Thanks. Yeah, 1,000 hours, that's, uh, that's pretty impressive. In fact, we had concerns when we were first designing the space station of how much time EVA, a uh, zero-G EVA time uh, it would take. Up at that point, we weren't really as experienced with, uh, with EVA. The shuttle program paved the way uh, with some of the earlier EVAs, getting our extravehicular mobility unit, EMU, up and running, and, uh, and then uh, getting it to really shine. Uh, some of the tools and uh, techniques that came along for space station building are very helpful. Uh, the, the stints that we did at Hubble Space Telescope, uh, we still use some of those tools to this day for the space station. So we've really come a long way with uh, space walking. We've learned a lot from our Russian partners, and they've learned a lot from us. And uh, the new suits that we have and their capabilities uh, allow us to do uh, longer spacewalks. I don't think anybody uh, 10, 20, 30 years ago would imagine that we would uh, have so many eight-hour spacewalks even like the one we had uh, just this week. It's Chris Baltimore with Reuters. Uh, question for Commander Kelly or perhaps for uh, Mike Guerin. Uh, springboarding off of uh, Mark Crow's question about uh, the station and the retirement of the shuttle fleet. Um, uh, re retirement of fleet means that we're, we're losing uh, quite a bit of capability. And just wondering uh, what your assessment is in terms of whether the space shuttle is, is ready to make this transition. 
and if there are concerns about uh, the uh, kinds of uh, capabilities that, that won't be in the toolbox in future years. Well, I think you mean the, re the retirement of the space shuttle and a transition to the museum. I, if that's what you're referring to, it's, it'll be a little bit more difficult. Uh, ATV, Progress, HTV provides you know, a certain upmass capability. It's not what the space shuttle can do. It can't bring anything home that you can reuse. Um, so it's going to be, it'll be a challenge. It'll be a logistical challenge for the, the folks that manage the space station program. Uh, but they've planned ahead. And uh, we'll be able to we'll be able to handle it, and we're going to have a very capable space station, and the the crews on board are going to be able to contribute in a, a, a robust science program. So it's uh, it, it's planned to work out, and I think it will. Endeavor ISS, this is Houston ACR. That concludes questions from the Johnson Space Center. Please stand by for a voice check from KSCPAO. Endeavor ISS, this is KSCPAO. How do you hear me? We well, you got you loud and clear. How do you hear us? Loud and clear. How do you hear us? Loud and clear. Of the Associated Press. Um, could I start with you, Commander Kelly? I, I know you've been chatting by phone with your wife daily. I'm just wondering, have you had a chance to video call with her yet, um, or is that in what days are left of your mission? Yeah, the plan is to do that tomorrow, as a matter of fact. Uh, so I plan to do it from the cupola, get her a give her a chance to look outside, look at the space shuttle, dock to the space station. That's an incredible view to see Endeavor sitting there with the, with the planet just below its tail. Uh, you can see, I mean, you're pretty close. And I'm um, looking forward to talking to her. I've been speaking with her every night before I go to bed. It's her morning. But it'll be nice to do it via video, be able to see how she's doing, and for her to join us on board the space station for a little bit. Um, how long of a session do you expect that to be? And, and is it going to be a special treat for you to see her post-surgery um, with the uh, repairs to her skull? Well, I think she still has bandages on. So, um, you know, I, I, I haven't really thought about what, what to expect. The amount of time is, I think it's about 20 or 30 minutes, those things typically are. Hopefully it'll be in a day pass, so I could show her some neat views of the Earth. Thank you. And I'd like to ask um, a few of the shuttle crew members um, their, their, their thoughts, their reflections on space shuttle endeavors. Um, you know, the, the flight's almost over. This is almost it. There's just a couple more days left for flying for Endeavor. W what are your thoughts when you take a, a moment to pause and think about that? I spent, uh, quite I spent quite a lot of time uh, before going to sleep looking out of the cupola. And uh, Endeavor is there waiting with a robotic arm deployed. Uh, it, this is my first opportunity to fly on the shuttle, and uh, I need to say that it's a great machine. It's performing extremely well, and uh, same thing with uh, the robotic arm. I'm very pleased, and uh, it a, a a, has been a, a unique experience for me. Happy to be here. Um, Todd Halverson of Florida today for, um, I don't know, one of the American guys. Um, you guys are on the cusp of being able to declare victory assembly complete on the USOS. And, and I'm wondering if you could um, rate this accomplishment and where it stands in the history of human engineering achievements. Yes, you're absolutely right. Um, you know, we, we have one more uh, EVA that's going to um, leave the, the boom from the shuttle behind that can be used for uh, helping us reach different parts of the space station uh, robotically uh, if needed later. Um, we've already um, installed uh, 
uh, pallet of external spare equipment. And uh, but you know our, the part that we're, we've added that was most significant on our mission was the alpha magnetic spectrometer. And um, you know this is an amazing scientific instrument that really uh, has a possibility of uh, un making some untold discoveries uh, uh, about the nature of our universe. So this is uh, a really fascinating and a, and a really big contribution, I think, to the to the uh, space station. But the space station itself, you know, it's it's unbelievable. I mean, it's it's a million it is a million pounds of of modules and hardware and scientific equipment and laboratories and 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 you know we we've had 12 people up here uh, until the last. Uh, uh, Soyuz crew just left, and um, it's an amazing, busy place with around-the-world op around operations, control centers, and uh, I think the things that are going to be uh, done up here over the next several years are really going to uh, push us far into the future. It's it's really our doorstep to the future and to exploring the rest of the solar system and beyond. So I think uh, it's something we really should be proud of. Um, not just Americans at all, but Americans and Russians and all of Europe and, and Canada and uh, all our national partners. It's, uh, it's really an amazing, uh, Japan, a really amazing uh, thing we've done together. And uh, it's going to be a terrific uh, next decade, I think, all working together toward the future. Um, thanks very much for that. Um, I wanted to ask uh, Mark Kelly about uh, the upcoming uh, atmospheric reentry and, and and landing. This is going to be a night landing, and I, I think it might be your first night landing. And I'm wondering uh, what you think the challenges uh, are going to be, and uh, if you could kind of give us an idea of what do you think it'll be like. Thanks. Well, the biggest challenge is it's going to be dark. You know, that's, uh, um, you know, night landings, uh, the fact that you don't have a horizon out the window could be a little bit more of a challenge, but these are mostly instrument approaches. I mean, they really are. I mean, we fly the equivalent of what uh, an ILS would be in an airplane. It's a much steeper glide slope, about 20 degrees instead of about two or three degrees. So, but we fly the approach exactly the same. We have some uh, very bright lights on the runway, so once you get down below about 100 or 50 feet, it's almost like daytime there when you get, get very close to the ground. Uh, I've got a lot of night landings uh, uh, over, I think, about 100 on an aircraft carrier. Those are challenging, too, so I've kind of been in this position before. Uh, I'm ready for it and look forward to it. Endeavor ISS, this is Houston ACR. That concludes questions from the Kennedy Space Center. Please stand by for a follow-up question from the Johnson Space Center. Hi, this is Robert Perlman with CollectSpace.com again with a question for Ron Garin. Um, the shuttle crew brought up with them Lego sets as part of an educational outreach project. And I know Katie Coleman was uh, quote unquote trained by her son with the expe expectation that she would be building them. But how are your Lego building skills, and what do you hope kids watching and perhaps even building along will take away from the experience? Well, I mean, educa education outreach is a big part of what we do uh, at NASA. I think j just the fact that we're flying in space and the amazing things that we're doing in space are, are very inspiring. I know that when I was a, a kid, I was inspired by the, the space program. And, uh, I, you know, as far as the Legos go, I think, my, I think my Lego skills are pretty good. Uh, I'll have to see. Uh, but, you know, we have lots of different um, methods of education outreach. That's one of them. And, um, you know, I think uh, that's... You know, one of the one of the reasons why we have the space station is, is to inspire the next generation. Hey, it's Bill Harlow. One more time with a question for one of the Russian guys, if I can, uh, for Commander Borisenko. Um, you've been up there for a while. I'm wondering what your impression of uh, life in the space station is, and how you're enjoying your stay so far. Я буду отвечать. I'll be answering that one in Russian. Our life here on the station is the life that's filled with work. We're on duty 24/7. Even when we're asleep, we're all, always ready to. Uh, we're always ready to quickly respond to whatever situation uh, that may occur.
the, this has been the first that this has been the first space flight of such an important vehicle. Such an important vehicle, this is a space station, uh, is really hard to maintain by uh, by the capabilities of uh, just, you know, the two folks. And so, uh, you know, the folks that were waiting for us here, our previous increment, took us from the zero cycle all the way through uh, all the uh, elements of uh, handover. And so we're not uh, rookies anymore, and the station has become our home. And we're here to uh, welcome and be happy to have any guests that may come and visit, and we're here to uh, share their experiences and uh, also extend ours to them. So we appreciate that. Endeavor ISS, this is Houston ACR. That concludes questions from the Johnson Space Center. Please stand by for a voice check from ESA. ISS, ISS, this is Isa Piero at the Italian Space Agency. How can you hear us? We hear you loud and clear. And this is now first question for Roberto Vittori. Buongiorno, Roberto. Sono Good morning, Roberto. This is Gabardi Sfoglia. In the moment that you enter in the space station, it's the first time that two, two people were at the same time. Unfortunately, due to availability, we didn't have chance to have you, to see your entrance. Can you please tell us how it was? The operations when we got uh, in the station and then the proof in order to check the pressure of the shuttle, finally we opened the big door. In reality, it happened in two phases. The first phase is me and the commandment. We went to open the big door and to remove one of the most important experiences of the mission, experiment. When we opened the big door, I saw Paolo on the other side. We said hi to each other. Then I got back and we went to put on the side the experiment, there was the whole equipment inside the station. The first effect in the shuttle was very particular. Everything flowed, but in reality, we work in a shuttle in a very small place. Therefore, the floor is not very comfortable. Entering inside the station changes the way to work. The space of the station is much bigger. The first effect is to come out from a tunnel very tight to a bigger place. At that moment, I went through the arch, the big door. Paolo was there with the other five members of the crew, and we said hi to each other and hug each other. We are Vittorio Argento. How, was, how were the experiments? But also the very small experiment. How did they go? AMS è stato MS il quarto giorno was uh, distilled from the Eravamo since the fourth day doppia, we robot did a double operation to robotic arms, me and a colleague of mine, we were inside the shuttle in order to operate the robotic arm from the shuttle AMS and then we passed it to the robotic arm of the space. Now it's working, it's already on, everything was perfectly and it's transmitting already. And now we have great wishes to good results of the universe. Also, with other pleasure, I did all the Italian experiments. They were all turned on. 
Ovviamente questi Obviously, these experiments, they are all working, they are all functioning perfectly. We should get the signal back now. Okay, we can start asking questions again. Uh, Mario Siglioni from Rai TG2. I would like to talk to Vittori. You are already a veteran of the special missions. Does that cause you a lot of emotions when you are up there or it's like going to the office on a daily basis? This is my third opportunity to before in 2005, the very first time on the shuttle. Every mission is a unique experience, especially with the particular of the Soyuz. Right now, I am waiting. The space station means it grew up a lot since last time I saw it in 2005. It doubled twice as much. I can tell you that the majority of the components are made in Italy and in Europe. Therefore, the Columbus I also work inside the PMM that was exclusively constructed in Italy. It also went through the Italian industry. It's a big jewelry. It's a unique opportunity to see the land in a context that before was not possible. You can see with this unique balcony, the land, every mission is unique, every, unique, every mission has unique uh, task. This particularly experience with the shuttle was also beautiful and also unique. This is Angelo Angelastro from TG1. I would like to ask Vittori one curiosity. You are meticulously uh, trained to fly, therefore you are, uh, you are able to confront every situation. Can you tell us some occasion that you had to uh, use your knowledge of your knowledges and abilities. The training, the way to interpret the Russian experience and the American one, it's a very systematic training in the specific of the mission 134. We did two years of training. It's impossible to reproduce the microgravity. It is impossible to produce in the land the very particulars, the way you work in the station outside the atmosphere of a structure very particular, which is the International Space Station. In reality, it, it helps you to get to know under the systems, but in reality, it's all a real time from the moment that you turn off the engines to the moment that your, or your body gets adapted all this cannot be proved through training and it becomes a real time of proof what an astronaut can do and can adapt to those particular conditions and also by do becoming a treasure, whatever you learn, but the space flight is something you have to adapt yourself in the moment that uh, you're not allowed, you know, to train yourself. There are exceptions, like example, to adopt yourself on the land with a special technical way in a swimming pool where the astronauts, they use certain suits with a certain equipment that they float inside the swimming pool 
rende l'addestramento in piscina. Also the training in the water gives you training but it's not identical. Therefore you have to adopt yourself in real time. Laura Ceccherini Sky TG24. Mi piacerebbe conoscere un po' I would like to know the emotions is there a moment that you might remember or not forget. Avrei voluto I would have liked have at the camera at the moment of the launch of the shuttle that's one of the most uh, emotional moment of all the mission, two years in training, and also when they count down the last uh, intention, the 29th of April, then the countdown went to zero. In, quel momento, in that very moment, I would have liked to take a picture, but it was not possible because we are in a conditions that are very extremely particular. We are sitting vertically, but if I would have a chance in that very instant, you know, the moment of the launch of the shuttles, which is characterized, it's like a big kick when the engines get on, turn on. It is also very impressionist, the two or three minutes make a lot of big impression. And also the visibility, because we are looking towards the sky, if there are clouds or things with the tail of the eye, we are just going towards the sky. The other very moment, very particular, it was in the space when the engines turned off and this progressive race that brings you from zero to 25,000 kilometers per hour, it transforms you in a calm and everything around you starts to floating. This is one of the moments that makes impression. But at the end, I can tell you, moments, there's many of them. But inside the reason, reason, it makes an incredible effect from how you see the land from the space when we are in orbit. We have chance to see backward our blue planet. Pina Piccirilli per conto di Giovanni Caprara, il Corriere della Sera. Be, this is Corriere della Sera. What impression did it make you to celebrate in the space this uh, particular fact, like 150 years? One of the things that I do with more pleasure, I always try to do not lose the opportunity to look outside when we pass over Italy. It is very hard and extremely to take a picture because Italy is always partially covered. So I always wish to surprise or to see them so I can take a picture of Italy and also when I pass by the station it's something that hits you the eye Italy is Italy is uh, all one and unique it is uh, different from uh, the European continent due to the Alps and the mountains Questo bellissimo mar Mediterraneo. And you see it in this beautiful Mediterranean Sea with uh, Sicily that are around. This image is the symbolic trip of the flag that in one occasion they gave it to me uh, celebrating the 150 years. This sense of Italy this desire to transmit the enthusiasm in order to see that Italy is not only present at the International Space Station, but is also protagonist, like you said before, 
a significant percentage here. They are made in Italy and they went through Italian hands and they are exclusively work constructed and financed by our Italian industry. Until a few days ago, Paolo Nespoli was here too. Now he got back to Houston inland. In order, and also for both of us, it was a very big honor to be part of this special agency through NASA. Endeavor ISS, this is Houston ACR. Thank you. That concludes the event. Thank you, Media JSC, KSC, and in Italy. Station, we're now in resuming operational audio communication. Hey, thank you, fellas. That was a really great job.